go ahead and get this started. Good evening to everyone. Welcome. Happy holidays. Notice is hereby given of a regular meeting of the district's board of directors to be held at 105 Port Road, Port Isabel, Texas on December 14th, 2022 at the hour of 530 p.m. for consideration of the business of the agenda below. This notice is posted to the office of the district on December 8th, 2022 at 430 p.m. in accordance with the Texas Open Meetings Act, Texas Government Code 551041551050, not less than 72 hours prior to the time of the said meeting. Today present we have uh, uh, a full quorum. We have present Dr. Lalonde, Mr. Friedman, Mr. Starkey, and Mr. Donahue. Uh, and joining us shortly, we have Mr. Water. Uh, if I may please have everyone stand for the Pledge of Allegiance and the invocation. <laughs> Yeah, Heavenly Father, Jesus Christ, please bless this day and uh, let us have a wonderful board meeting and uh, as you stay in your thoughts and prayers and say these things. In the name of Jesus Christ, amen. 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 Thank you. That takes us to item three, invitation to the audience for public comments. Uh, yes, sir, Mr. Chairman, uh, gentlemen, uh, can you bring that? just want to let the board know that the Mr. Baker Lee has been uh, caused repaired. Order. At the uh, on the causeway, but if you look at this coupling here, that one had like a four inch gap, and the problem is that it has like a rubber seal if you may on each side, a couple of uh, rests. So with the movement and the weight on the bridge, there are other every thirteen feet. They have couplings. Some of them are closer than this one. This one was only. Uh, four inches apart, as you can see there. So with the movement on the bridge, that coupling got loose, the, the uh, thread in there got loose, or the seal, and that's what caused the leak. Do you think that that's going to be a continual problem further down the line on those? I mean, those rubber gaskets wearing out, is that kind of... With the, age, with the age of the pipes and the movement on the bridge that uh, we're having now with all the traffic, this will probably continue. Uh, hopefully not as frequent as we've had it this year. Uh, which this is our third one, but uh, hopefully it, it doesn't continue that much. But uh, just to let you know that in, in all probabilities it will happen. This was uh, fixed at a cost of about 13000 It was uh, 11900 for the uh, part and 1200 for the scissor lift and they had four men that went up there to, to fix it it was at the lower uh, part of the bridge so we were lucky in, in being able to get the, the barge and the scissor lift uh, on it to be able to take care of it. unfortunately the other repairs that we've had have been on the high end of the bridge and that has cost us around thirty-five thousand plus it was 24 that was the scaffolding roughly right or the yes, yes. yeah yes. Right. The catwalk yes. catwalk so what what i mean we really should look into re-sleeving that or something i mean what, we need to evaluate because it's, if it's going to keep continually happening in the budget i mean you're fifteen thousand dollars per repair pretty much and again it depends on on the for the uh, record we have mr Botter joining the meeting place and bridge wherever the gap is at if it's on the high side, we may have to use that uh, catwalking, and that can run for money. That that'll run about twenty-five thousand. We're gonna have to look into slip line. That's what you said. Uh, can we every five hundred feet or so they can add and then add some more? We'll look into the cost on it. It's coming. Oh, that looks yeah. pretty. Right. All right, just for clarification, this particular issue, we, we've had three leaks or three compromises in, in our in our line. But this is the first time I remember it happening at the joint. Or have all three of them been at the joint? All three of them have been this yes. same situation? Every single day we got a causeway from 20 minutes at the end and all the Okay. Have all been what? It's been at the, at the joint. Okay. Or replacing a coupling that runs A coupling, yeah. 
Okay, I didn't. I didn't recall that. Well, so then, are these are these joints the same? <coughs> thing? They got are they like rubber, rubber the same way. It's just yes, newer. Yeah, down in the pipe. Yes, sir. Yeah. How old? Seventy-four. Thirty-three, seventy-four. Fifty years. So it's probably older than you, Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> it is. Um, I age better, apparently, though. Can we start doing some um, proactive research and, 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 and starting to brainstorm what a long term solution would be? I mean, obviously, our line is aged and, yes. and, and options would be nice um, as we start to prepare financially for that. Because, I mean, what are we at right now? $70,000, roughly, more or less, 50 plus, what did you just say, 13, 65? For three leaks, no. yeah. This is the just to remind you that the two mile bridge and those pipes are about thirteen feet apart. Okay. Anyone Thank else you. like to add anything? One more. Yeah, I'd like to add something to that. I think we got a uh, we had a kind of commended these guys that go up to mm -hmm. yeah. and just uh, the lives. Going up and up and they're going strapped in and everything, you know. But I talked to two different contractors, trying to what they would do, and they're like, and I wouldn't even know where to start with. with the whole project, right? Okay. Start with the whole project, so yeah. Like, do a repair. I talked to Cornette, talked to GT, and they were both like, and I wouldn't even know what to start right now. That's 812 connections at this every 13. Mm -hmm. That would be about right. Yeah, 812. And then you might even have more than that because uh, you have stub outs. We have uh, air leak valves and some adjustments. Especially in the bottom top portion of the grid. We probably have a couple more. Yeah. And I don't even know if, if making, if redoing the connections is the best thing to do, right? I mean, why would we be redoing 50 year old? Joint technology. There could be a way better way of getting yeah. water across. There's the what they call a sleeve. Yeah. Well, well Carl, have you guys looked into extruded pipe? So on golf courses now, when they do irrigation, there are no more pipes. It's it, 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 it's this is one continuous pipe. It's Seamless. It's, yeah, extruded pipe. I, I can get information on it. Uh, they're doing it out of Rancho Viejo, yeah, which is, and this time we're under 115 psi. You're looking at $10 million. If it's 812 and the average is 12 grand because you says it's $11,000 fix. And then obviously we're going to buy a $25,000 scaffolding and move it and, and work on it. I mean, you're looking at $10 million. I like the idea of taking contact with the fix on or something. I have no idea why that I think somehow above. Anyway, we won't solve the problems of the world today, but we've identified there's a problem and we need to start looking towards how we're going to solve it. Thank you for reporting that. Anything else for public comment? Go well, Frogs. I'd like to welcome Judge and Judge Ochoa here. It's a pleasure to have you both here today, gentlemen. Thank you for taking the time uh, being a part of the swearing-in ceremony today. Let's move along to item four, consider and discuss for possible approval of the minutes of the regular meeting from November 21st, 2022. Second. Motion made by Dr. Lalonde and seconded by Mr. Donahue. Are all those in favor? They are. None opposed. Motion carries. Thank you. Item five, administer the oath of office for the newly elected board of directors, uh, Dr. Uh, Lalon and Mr. Starkey. Congratulations and welcome to you both. Thank you. Thank you, Judge Cho. And I'd also like to congratulate you. Thank you very much. I think we're lucky and blessed to have you again. So. Thank you very much. Likewise. I'll go first since I'm the one that ran against anybody. <laughs> <laughs> Well, we won't have to be I guess you don't have to worry about messing your hair up. <laughs> 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 okay, uh, we can stand up here. Okay, before we get started, uh, I'd like to wish everybody a Merry Christmas and formally introduce myself. I am Judge Benny Bobochoa, your local Friday Justice of the Peace of Cameron County, Precinct 1, Place 1. 
Um, it's an honor to be here, and I'd like to thank uh, Mr. Starkey for giving me the honor of throwing him in and Mr. Uh, Lon. Um, so we're going to get started. Um, so with that being said, please raise your right hand. Um, I'm going to start off. In the name and by the authority of the state of Texas, not to speak the after you. I, I, Jason Starkey. Jason Starkey. Do solemnly swear. Do solemnly swear. That I will faithfully. That I will faithfully execute the duties. Execute the duties of office. Of office of Laguna Madre Water District. Of the Laguna Madre Water District. Board of Director. Board of Director. Place one. Place one. Of the state of Texas. Of the state of Texas. And will to the best of my ability. And will to the best of my ability. Preserve. Preserve. Protect. Protect. And defend the Constitution. And defend the Constitution. And the law. And the law. Of the United States. Of the United States. And of this state. And of this state. So help me God. So help me God. Congratulations. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, now I will sign here as well. There we go. Congratulations. Thank you very Best much. Of Congratulations. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Sir, thank you for giving me the honor. Okay, please raise your right hand. Uh, in the name and by the authority of the state of Texas, please repeat after me. I, I, Adam Lalon, Adam Lalon, do solemnly swear, do solemnly swear that I will faithfully, that I will faithfully execute the duties, execute the duties of office, of office of the Luna Madre Water District, of the Luna Madre Water District. Board of Director, Board of Director, Place Five, Place Five, of the State of Texas, of the State of Texas, and will to the best, and will to the best of my abilities, of my abilities, protect, protect, preserve, preserve, defend, defend the Constitution and laws, Constitution and laws of the United States, United States, and of this state, and of this state. So help me God, so help me God. Congratulations. Congratulations to both of you, and I'd like to state uh, it's a pleasure working with everyone on this board, uh, and I think this board is moving forward and progressively getting a lot of things accomplished for the district, and Thanks I think everyone is working well together, together as a family and the board, it makes a big difference. Thank you guys. Thank you. Thank I have another, uh, I'm going to uh, excuse myself, but I have another event, but God bless you guys, and please let me know what I can do for y'all. Thank, Thank you, Judge, and likewise. Thank you, Judge. Just be, before we move on, I just want to thank everybody for their support. And uh, when I got into it four years ago, we all knew there were some very specific reasons why some of us are on the board. I was trying to correct what we thought was maybe an imbalance. Uh, but I've really enjoyed getting to know everybody. A lot of high quality individuals who are working here. I've never seen anybody, you know. Not working without a good purpose. Uh, and I see those trucks all over the place. Uh, so I really appreciate getting to know you guys and, and your hard work and, and your good hearts. Uh, that's why I decided I'd see Bob for four more years. I'm sorry if you have to uh, have me crunching the numbers a little bit, but you know, I, I think we'll do our very best to keep supporting you guys as, as good as we can. <coughs> and I'll report it down to some of the, the cool things we're trying to do here. So thank you so much for. Let me hang out. I'm trying to keep the jokes up here still. Everyone adds value. Everyone in this chair up here adds value. He has something to offer. Thank you guys very much, Austin. Being our board members. Thank you, fellas. It's a wonderful getting to know you guys. So, my comments would be uh, it's like Christmas vacation. I think of Cousin Eddie. This is the gift that keeps on giving all year round, you know? Um, yeah. When I got into this, I did not anticipate doing it again. Um, but now that I'm here, I'm, I'm learning so much um, about this business and uh, this experience and this utility in our community and uh, what can be accomplished when a board works together. Um, I, I wouldn't do it if, if the other men weren't sitting up here with me because um, there's enough conflict in my life. I don't need this board to 
to be another part of that. So I like the cohesiveness. I like what we've set out to achieve. I think there's some really great things ahead of us as we prepare for the growth that's occurring all around our community and will occur. Um, so I just wanted to be a small part of seeing that through. So thank you all for your support. Thank you again to the Ochoa family uh, for your support and being here today. It's an honor to do this again with you, right? Four years ago, it was us and it's us again. And, and uh, we're, we're grateful for your service to this community as well. So God bless you guys. That's all I got. Thank you. Well stated. Uh, item six, consider and approve the reorganization of the officers. Anyone would like to be chairman? They're welcome. I'll make a motion. We stay the same. <laughs> Boom. All those in favor. <laughs> Next <laughs> item. Let's roll. Uh, motion made by uh, Mr. Starkey to keep the existing uh, organizational chart. Uh, seconded by Dr. Lalonde. Are all those in favor? There uh, are. Are there any opposed? None. Thank you. Uh, organizational chart stays. Uh, item seven consider and approve the reorganization of the committee list. Committee, uh, uh, audit committee, budget committee, and I, committee. Uh, I uh, make a motion that we must the same with the committee. Same organizational structure. Second. Motion made by Dr. Lalonde to keep the same, and the second was made by uh, Mr. Starkey or Mr. Balder. I didn't hear. Okay, Mr. Starkey. Uh, all those in favor? Aye. They are. Any opposed? None. Motion carries. Thank you. Let's move on to item eight, general manager's report. Uh, yes, uh, Mr. Chairman, members of the board, the general uh, levels are still at 32.2. Keeping it level, but slowly climbing. Very little, but uh, one or two. Uh, the same, uh, it's, uh, going up slowly, but it's maintained at 32. Right? 30%. And it hasn't rained anymore, but it's steadily staying there at the same level. Uh, the next one that I have is for December the 28th, is our this board meeting. I was going to recommend that the board is uh, at the council that meeting. I'm second that. I'll make a motion to cancel that meeting. Make sure she's going on through that. Yes, sir. Yeah, I'll, I'll be here. It's for discussion only, but yes. Uh, <laughs> 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 oh, well, okay. Mr. Hoffman, we'll right. on the website. So the meeting will, we agree to move it to January 11th, right? Or we'll meeting. Okay. So we will meet again on January 11th. January 11th. That's the next meeting. This will be our office. Uh, not this year only on Monday the 26th. Uh, 26th. Monday the 26th. 26th? Yes, correct. And then the first. First of the Sunday as well. Are we close to the second? Second. Uh, does that conclude, Carlos? What is that? That concludes yours? So we're item nine, director of operations report. Mr. Chairman, gentlemen, uh, members of the board, uh, for the service calls and call out, the uh, distribution department, uh, comparing November with October, there were 81 uh, less call outs and service calls, and those affected customer service, distribution, uh, electrical constraints. Those were your highest changes and that went into the uh, groups of uh, water taps occupant change turn on service informational and electrical and the di distribution uh, collection site excuse me there were 14 service calls call outs less uh, call outs and service calls and that affected the uh, collection uh, Decrease in call out, call outs also in 16 and follow ups uh, increased by five. And that affected also the manhole work primarily and preventive maintenance for pre treatment and uh, lift stations. That uh, had an increase of seven uh, service calls higher uh, in November than in October. And that, those were in, contacted uh, the existing food service establishments, the electrical issues, 
and removal of fog and clean fogs for lift station wet wells. That concludes the report. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Starkey asked we could move item 11 up. Is that, is that okay, Charles? Uh, yeah, it works for me. Okay, can we move item 11 up, please, for the record? Uh, item 11 is presentation by IDE Technologies Group on uh, seawater desalination. Oh. All right. Uh, yeah, I guess I don't know if you want to take the podium. Okay, Iris will be presenting? Or... Okay, all right. Uh, yes, please. Hi, welcome. If you could please state your name yes, for the record. Of course, for the record. <laughs> um, that sounds very uh, yeah, content. Well, <laughs> yeah. uh, my name is Iris Jancic. I'm CEO of IDE Americas. Uh, we are a wholly owned subsidiary of IDE Technologies. That's a company that's uh, on the presentation. Um, so first of all, on behalf of my colleagues and myself, thank you very much uh, for giving us the opportunity to come and present to you in uh, a short 15, no more than 20 minute presentation to make it really quick. We got very uh, official instructions and of course we have uh, some time for questions if you have any. Uh, so first of all, thank you. I appreciate it and I apologize to the people behind me. Um, just a few words about myself. <coughs> I am originally from uh, the state of Israel. IDE Technologies is a company that's uh, based out of Israel. I'll give you a very, very brief um, history of the company. Uh, I actually grew up in Connecticut, went back uh, to join uh, the Israel Defense Force when I was 18, and four years ago got the opportunity to come uh, back to the great state of Texas, and we've been here ever since. Um, so this is actually, uh, I've been in this role for a year and a little bit, and it's actually my second round with IDE. Uh, I used to work on, uh, I was a project manager for one of the projects that I'll actually present to you here, so we'll talk a little bit about that. Oh, do I have a clicker? Oh, okay. Wouldn't be an official presentation without a clicker, you know, yeah. <laughs> Um, so we like to start off kind of uh, uh, with a, a couple of visionaries that uh, we can very much relate to. Uh, Prime Minister uh, David Ben-Gurion, who was uh, the founder of the State of Israel, and President John F. Kennedy, two great leaders who had the vision of turning seawater, uh, a very common and abundant uh, resource, into drinking water. So who we are, uh, as I mentioned, we were established in uh, Israel in 1965. IDE actually stands for Israel Desalination Enterprise. Not a lot of people know that. Uh, it started as a government entity to actually deal with the scarcity of drinking water in the state of Israel. It's been uh, privatized about 40 years ago and uh, completely privatized to this day. Uh, we are a global expert in desalination in both membrane and thermal technologies. Uh, we've worked in over 40 countries across the world uh, with hundreds and hundreds of installations. We have, like I mentioned, our headquarters in Israel. Our headquarters uh, in the US is uh, in California, in Carlsbad, California, um, Mexico, Chile, and Australia, as well as two offices in India. Very quickly, um, other than desalination, which again, this is what uh, ID is mostly known for, um, small, medium, and up to mega-sized plants. We also manufacture and engineer modular plants, thermal technologies, um, and chemical-free plants, and I'll give you a couple examples of that. In addition to that, we are experts, consider ourselves experts in industrial water. So industries such as the power industry, oil and gas, um, data centers, uh, petrochemical industries that need a lot of water and usually are also very highly regulated in terms of what they can discharge. Uh, that is where ID comes in to help them uh, with high recovery RO systems. And finally, wastewater reuse. In terms of how we use, how we work <coughs> and our models of business, so we are very flexible in terms of how we can support our clients and our customers. We have a variety of turnkey projects, uh, setups, full engineering, um, procurement and construction, a full EPC, turnkey projects. Um, but like I said, we're very open to different delivery methods. Uh, water sales, so uh, 3P, uh, BOT kind of uh, uh, finance projects as well, 
uh, usually these are very large government projects. Um, and finally, operation and maintenance. So we love designing, building, and then operating long-term our plants, uh, providing uh, continuous O&M, supervision, training, spare parts, again, whatever um, the customer needs in terms of uh, whatever local capabilities they have and what they need us to complement. So uh, leadership in worldwide large capacity uh, <coughs> plants. We like to say that we built the largest plants in the world. So we built the largest plant in Israel. We built the largest plant in China, the largest plant in India, and the largest plant in North America, which is in Carlsbad. And that is actually why our headquarters are there. I'd be happy to share the presentation. Um, long term tradition of excellence. Uh, we recently uh, won the desalination company of the year for 2022. Um, by far, it was not our first time, but it's something that uh, preserving quality is sometimes even harder than, than winning it and maintaining that high quality standards is something that we're very, very proud of. Industries, I mentioned a little bit. Um, ID assets, again, in terms of uh, pub public private partnerships, we have the ability to come in, bring in uh, financing partners when needed and uh, assist with all the asset management as well. One of the benefits of IDE, one of uh, uh, our biggest advantages, uh, like I mentioned, is working in a variety of countries, variety, polit variety of political uh, environments, of social environments. This allows us to uh, use our aggregated knowledge to continuously improve. Uh, we have uh, over uh, 25, if I'm not mistaken, uh, patents for uh, advanced RO for technological innovations. Um, although we work, like I mentioned, in all those countries, our engineering department is one department, which is in Israel. And the reason that we did kind of se segregate that um, is for uh, the benefit of being able to really accumulate the knowledge in, in one place so that we can uh, change and, and continue to innovate the projects that we do. Um, I'll mention this a little bit in, in a couple more slides, but um, the biggest advantages and the biggest improvements that have been done in desal in the past two decades, obviously, is uh, energy consumption, chemical consumption. Uh, these are the two uh, cost drivers for these types of projects, and our R&D department is very, very busy continuously to making those uh, aspects more efficient and basically making cheaper water. So just uh, we chose a few of our many, many plants. Uh, we wanted them to be recent. We wanted them to be relevant uh, to Laguna Madre's needs as well. So I'm kind of uh, uh, focusing just on a few. But of course, we can share with you as many references uh, and as many pages as you'd like to print up. Uh, the first is the Bonaire plant. This is a plant um, in the Caribbean islands, not far from here. Uh, we actually delivered it last year, and we are now working on a uh, expansion plan. So this, the island has been growing so quickly, and their needs and, and their tourism has grown so much that they just completed the plant. They're operating it um, like on their own. Sorry. The this is uh, 1.92 MGD. 2 MGD, 7,200 cubic meters. And now they are going to uh, add another uh, two trains. So they're going to almost double it um, and add some post treatment. So this is a plant. Uh, it was designed initially for this expansion. I don't think they decided, they knew they were going to do it so quickly. Um, but that is something that we're already working and will be delivered in 2023 to the island. What is unique about this plant, because of the regulations of what is considered a blue island, because of the waters, is that it's completely chemical free. Uh, that can't be done, of course, in all sizes, in all uh, locations, but here it was mandatory and it was something that uh, IPD could definitely provide. Uh, also special about this plant is that it was actually commissioned during COVID. 
And since our commissioning team from Israel, actually from California as well, wasn't able to travel, uh, we actually teamed up with a third party, developed a remote solution, and the whole commissioning process was done remotely. Um, last week, we signed a contract with Web Bonaire, which is the water authority, uh, to purchase the system. They now have it, a full SCADA system on their plant, and we're actually supervising it uh, in a long-term supervising supervision contract with them to allow them uh, to maintain smooth operations. What money? Um, eight million. Yes. Is there five MGD intake? Um, well, they have their own wells. We didn't build the intake. So they're doing brackish, uh, brackish well. No, um, it's seawater. It is seawater. It's seawater. Seawater. seawater wells. Yes. Yes. Um, so Carlsbad, this was our first project in North America uh, almost 15 years ago. This is 54 MGD. Um, one of our model plants, I personally have toured a lot of plants. This is uh, one of the prettiest by far. Um, you're all very much invited to come visit. We'll be very, very happy to, uh, to host you, even though you might want to go, go to Bonaire more. And I understand <laughs> that. We can do that too. I don't mind going there either. Um, so this plant, uh, very unique about um, due to its footprint. So very, very small footprint. It's, uh, uh, it was really uh, designed like a jigsaw puzzle to just put everything together in the very, very limited space that you can see that we have there uh, behind the power station. And um, now actually the off-taker, which is a city, San Diego County Water Authority, is building a brand new intake. We're going to take that on too in terms of operation. This is a 30-year contract um, for operation and maintenance of this plant. Did you say Bonaire was operating themselves? Yes. Um, they, they wanted to operate it with their own manpower. And um, they did realize after about six months that they need so, some support. And so initially, they didn't want us to supervise them. But like I said, last week, we signed the contract for long-term supervision. So they, they needed a little bit more support. Um, I think we put in place two training programs for them. Um, they run their own water treatment plants. And, and so they figured they'd catch on. But it's a little bit more complicated, especially since it's a chemical-free plant. So they don't have the cleaning in place, which is automatic in other plants. Please. Okay. Oh, there's one in Santa Barbara too, if you want. You had me. So Santa Barbara was actually a vintage plant. It was uh, built, it was operated for less than a year, and then they closed it down. Not sure why. Um, and it was pretty much stood uh, a ghost uh, plant for, for uh, about 15 years. Uh, we came in to refurbish it, but it was actually to, to really just skeletal <coughs> out and, and rebuild it because nothing there could really be used. Um, but it is called a retrofit. It's a 2.8 MGD plant. Uh, what is unique about this one, it was completely modular. So uh, this can just be uh, the, the intake and the pretreatment uh, was designed for a much larger plant. And we're actually now negotiating with the city to build up to 10 MGD. Um, and then the skids that you're seeing in the picture, those are modular and could just be added on as needed. So that is a, a unique, actually, IDE pattern in terms of how we build those skids. Uh, so, Rex, so this is actually the project that I was involved with, with my first round uh, with uh, IDE. Uh, back then, it was the largest plant in the world uh, in terms of this type of technology. Uh, what is uh, special or, or was challenging in this project was that the plant was actually is located 1.8 miles from the shoreline. So it was considered very far, especially since the other plants in Israel are, are really on the shoreline. Um, and even more challenging is what was bordering between the plant and the ocean was a, a natural park, a natural reserve park. So uh, what we did here is uh, uh, we pipe jacked 
underneath the uh, National Noah Park and underneath the ocean floor. So this was actually the first offshore pipe jacking project in Israel, uh, where we pipe jacked 2.5 meter pipes underneath the ocean floor, um, two kilometers out. So my job was personally to walk that line every morning. Uh, I think I stopped after about one kilometer. That's where the air gets a little bit <laughs> stuffy and you feel a little bit lightheaded. Um, but it was a very, very groundbreaking uh, project for Israel. Um, like I said, 624,000. Um, how much is that in MGDs? Is that there? No. So 165 MGD, uh, beautiful thing. What was also here uh, for the first time in the world, IDEU 16 inch membranes that were placed vertically as opposed to horizontal. It was done for um, uh, energy saving and pressure reduction. Um, it was kind of a test case. It was very successful here. Um, but in the next project that I'll show you, uh, which is a continuation of this, we, we went back to vertical. What are they putting on the top of the pipe? I mean, if the pipe's going in this way, what are they to keep things from floating into the pipe? What are they that intake? No, I was talking about the, the membranes, oh, I the RO. Sure. Okay. No, the intake went uh, out to the ocean. There was a, a, a huge intake structure, concrete structure with nets and, and to keep the jellyfish and the big, uh, the big fish out. Um, and then uh, the brine was diffused through a diffuser system. Kind of like a, a chimney <clears throat> that spreaded out the, the brine and at high enough pressure that it was spread out and, and didn't cause obviously any damage to the sea life. Um, Hadera is also planned in Israel. Um, this one is just a little bit smaller than Solek. Um, as you can see right on the coastline, um, it was the world's largest at the time. Um, and as you can see, this plant is adjacent to a power plant, one of the biggest power plants in Israel. Again, what was uh, a big benefit advantage here was we utilized um, the tariffs, the, the high and low tariffs of the electrical company, um, and our intake was actually their cooling water. So that was a, a, a big cost saving for, for the government, which is the client here. Again, long-term 25-year uh, contract. Ashkelon, again, another uh, very, very large plant. In Israel, I'll just mention, um, there are six, very, very, five existing, very, very large plants, um, <coughs> this type of capacity. And the sixth one was actually just bid last year. And we got, um, uh, I think two months ago, um, the news that we won that sixth and final desal plant. It's gonna be in the north, in the Galil. And, um, that plant is actually, other than providing seawater, is actually going to fill the Kineret, the, uh, the Kineret Lake. This is the, the, the very, very uh, holy lake where uh, Jesus walked on water. Um, it's a very, very beautiful site, and uh, we need to keep the water levels there, you know, very high to, to make sure nature is preserved. Um, so we construction is going to start on that one in 2023, and after that is built, the state of Israel's drinking water will be 90, 90% desalinated water. Wow. Yes. So Ben Gurion had a vision, and less than 75 years later, it completely uh, formulated it. So this is Sorek B. It's actually the twin of the previous Sorek plant that I mentioned. Um, here, ID actually patent uh, execution technology of building and commissioning the plant as we build it. So this is going to be uh, executed in less than um, in less than 32 months, which is super fast for these types of projects. Again, very very uh, large capacity. 32 months. 50 plant available. So after 32 months, the plant is going to go on at 50 percent, and after 36 months, it's going to be 100 percent. This is due to the fact that we can build it and commission it as we go along. And I mentioned Bonaire, and I mentioned Carlsbad. 
you are more than welcome to come visit us in Israel. We love taking visitors there. We promise you uh, a good tour. Another project in Australia, again, more of the same. I don't want to uh, kind of wear you out, uh, but again, the, the location here was very, very challenging. Um, very, very, uh, uh, one of the remotest places on earth, that's what it's called. And it's actually um, the main water source to the iron ore mine, to the largest iron ore mine in the world. So again, there was an interest here, money, incentives, and uh, to keep that mine working. And this plant was, uh, again, built in a very challenging location. Um, this is what we're here for. We uh, like to support our customers. We like to talk and present and answer questions at these stages of, of the project to see what is the best solution uh, specific for your needs, for your community. Um, building solid partnerships, that's how we call ourselves. We are your water partners. Uh, we'll support you during the design stage, we'll support you during the execution stage and long term after as needed. We can do the training, we can operate, or again, just uh, um, whatever you decide is needed in terms of your scope of work. Tradition of our innovation, we constantly look for those solutions uh, where we can use natural gas, where we can become more electrical efficiency, where we can reduce prices, uh, reduce consumption of chemicals because we can't control their prices, which everybody knows has skyrocketed in the past year. So reducing the consumption uh, will make again for cheaper water and uh, using our expertise, basically, no matter how small or big is the plant, to provide you the best solution. What are our Thank needs? What, what are we focusing on for our needs? Well, that's what we're uh, uh, trying to find out more information on different companies. And uh, we can uh, move forward, bring to the board something that, that is reasonable and uh, at our level of financing, you know, where we can uh, level of the uh, finance that we, we have available. So we'll bring something back to the board as, as soon as we get gather more information on it. We probably need to have another meeting. Is, is, uh, is your company private or publicly traded? Private. And by the way, I'm based out of Texas, and both of my colleagues here as well are as well. Um, our headquarters is in California, but most of the people are not. <laughs> Um, again, other than the plants and, and the operators. Um, so we are stand available and, and supportive whatever you need and Is provide there you whatever else information on the you need. Texas Gulf Coast looking at this at this concept? Oh, yeah. I you know, Mark. You have other parties involved or Yes, absolutely. Yeah. Um, for the record, my name's Mark Ellison with ID Americas and I do business development and government relations. Uh, there are no current operating seawater desal plants uh, along the Gulf Coast in the state of Texas. Uh, we are uh, working to develop a project in Freeport, Port of Freeport, a potential 50 million gallon a day plant. Uh, visiting with the people in Corpus Christi about their potential. They've been looking at it for a long time. So they're trying to figure out how they want to go about it there also the potential for a smaller plant um, at the port of Victoria. And so I don't think uh, any of them are as far as long as you are here because of the good work of your staff and the board. Uh, so it hadn't been done yet in Texas, but I don't have to tell you, we've got a drought situation and economic growth and uh, the river's about taking all they can handle. So. Uh, but we're excited about the potential here and really what is an ideal site. Thank you. So the big question, what's the, the numbers? What what can you deliver? Sure. What's our cost? So we actually um, yeah. provided uh, your team with a budgetary cost. Right. Um, I don't know if, uh, if that's oh, uh, the board or... uh, yeah, I mean, in general, right now with the with the one with the three MGD plant between the intake that we're designing and the treatment, I mean, we're in that ballpark of fifteen million, which is pretty close to authorization from Proposition Two. So, so we're not too far off with the with budgetary numbers that we're looking at at this stage. So, I mean, what, it's what's our our cost of production of the water? Now, you know, we know what our our in house is. What's our cost of production? Uh, the river water versus seawater. Yeah. Yeah. 
Yeah, we'd have to follow up with exact numbers unless you have anything to shoot from the hip. But yeah, we don't have anything ready to, to present at this point. Good. That that would be my first follow up number, just because having visited with some other companies on this, they got us a number on that. So that just gives us a basis of deciding, like, oh, is this something that makes sense for us? Obviously, the lower that number is, the more like, well, heck, we'll stop getting water from the river, right? And transition totally to something. Let me, if I may, uh, mention one aspect of that um, that comes up a lot about seawater desal. Um, uh, yes, it is more expensive than taking it from the river or a well or whatever, but the ocean's always going to be there. And it doesn't have to rain. And so there's an insurance factor that you need to think about of while something might be a little higher in price, What's the price of running out? And so in all the places, a little different than in Israel, that we look at in the States, uh, desal is not the only source of water. It can be blended. It's that insurance policy. In uh, San Diego County, who's our customer, San Diego County Water Authority at the Carlsbad plant, we're only 12% of their water source. But we're the 12% that'll never run out. Uh, they rely on other sources in California, which are challenged. So I ask that you kind of keep in mind the insurance factor of it's not that the price that our water might be will be the price for everything. It can be a blended waters and blended costs. Sure. Yeah. And we recognize that that's what we would look at it as. I would say like for our department and also for your finance as well, we would love to your, your thoughts on the presentation strictly on, on cost, right? So that we can kind of sit down and there's a lot of cost factors that I don't know about. You know, I'm, I'm, I'm not steeped in this every day. So maybe I'd love to hear you guys walk us through like, well, here's how you should think about this. At least your kind of sales pitch yeah. on that side. Yeah. Certainly you guys have the expertise to do it. You're doing it all over the world. You know, it's a beautiful place. And so it's when you got the little South Texas long way away, you know, South Texas is almost a South Texas. So, uh, but I would love to hear a presentation, hey, here's how we, how we would walk you through these numbers, here's a way to think about it, and maybe get them some of our numbers, and let them process our, our numbers, and give us their comments on our numbers as well, you know, that's not something we need to, like, hide, it's public knowledge anyways, right, so uh, giving them that, and letting them kind of compare the two of them, and put a presentation together on how they see that making sense so they would be willing to have a whole department willing to put those systems together for us as a construction. Right, and part of it is, you know, just the data collection to have more knowledge, to be able to have a more accurate estimate. For example, you know, with a study going on with the core, I mean, they just did some collect, collect data collection this first week of December, and uh, there were some additional water quality parameters that were outside of the scope of the core of engineers that, that VJ had sent, and we actually did some collections. We, we collected that those on Monday of last week, so we can start putting that data together and, and you know just get a better understanding of what we need to be doing. Nice presentation. Anything else to discuss on this? Appreciate you guys coming down and visiting with us. Yeah, yeah. Thank you. Way down here, we look forward to further discussions. It's, I would tell you it's something we're very serious about. You know, if you just saw me sign up for four more years here, um, it's something I would like to see happen. You know, I don't expect it to be over four years from now. But that must stay in mind. But it is possible. Yeah, I was going to say, the biggest. With, uh, some other numbers uh, as soon as we get together and all together and, and uh, bring it back to the well, we had that last presentation. Well, we yeah, we have some numbers uh, available, uh, but they kind of fine tuned it. And it's there, but we'll bring it back at the next meeting. Glad you guys are here yeah. in Texas. That's helpful. Uh, <clears throat> it's not a stretch to say that the company that it is the most uh, exhausted and trying to put this plan together for us is probably going to be the one that's uh, Everybody's been put up the beautiful pictures of the incredible plants, right? But at the end of the day, 
customer service is going to be huge to us, and that kind of shows itself on the front end. So I appreciate what, what Chris was Okay, great. Thanks again. Thank, Thank you again. Uh, Charles? All right, I guess we can go? jump back to the engineer's yes. report. Do you have questions from Jason? All right. So I guess jumping back to uh, the engineer's report, we have item number 10. Let's see. Which is the first one is the status of the water system improvements. We know we've been talking about the inflation and the cost for these design works uh, getting higher and higher. And with our current 90% uh, cost estimates for water plant one microfiltration, um, the, the work that's been out for bid, our tank number six, uh, current, just for example, uh, elevated storage tank number six, we're advertising at this time, and the current engineer's estimate is 4.7 million, and uh, which is uh, you know, close to a million higher than, than what the estimate was in July. And so, you know, taking that into condition, our water plant one system, I mean, we're pretty much seeing, you know, a, a cost uh, overruns on the range of $9.5, $10 $10 million from, from our available funds to finish out the work. And so that's, that's basically the main point of, you know, kind of crunching the numbers. Our, our starting balance uh, for our tax bonds for this fiscal year is uh, at $21.16 million. And so with that money in the bank, we should be able to get Tank 6 under contract and procure the, the contract directly with Paul to purchase the membranes. But then at just simply uh, putting the MF building out for bid, we're pretty much running negative at that stage with what's in the bank. So, so that's basically sort of modified what's on the green board here, right? Because we also looked out where December 1st, we received a letter from Texas Water Development Board with an invitation to apply for the state revolving fund from our request back in state fiscal year 2022. So that invitation is uh, in our court right now to consider uh, for an amount of 23 million or below um, so pretty much we have to respond by January 2nd uh, for, for that request. So we know we needed a revenue note or some source. And so this, this invitation happens to come at the right time, mm -hmm. you know, to where we can probably request about 10 million so we can make sure this work gets to 100%. So that, that's really the main, uh, the main point of, of the presentation today. I know this ask, um, what's talking about doing the desalinization? Come in, drop in 10 MGD rather months. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Why, for the number of people in this district, does it not seem like Overkill to have two water treatment plants plus a desalinization water treatment plant? Now, this your guys' thoughts on that. Um, it's, I guess it's that peak day of 7 million gallons, which yeah, is 95. Yeah, we're, we're pushing and a water plant too hard. And then it's the surface water is where we're hitting our limit, right? How so much? Why would we just do one desal and one more? Uh, I mean, it's just, uh, I suppose there's there's different ways to skin a cat. I mean, if we were going to look at going desal at water plant one, I mean, it's, you know, it's, it, it would be maybe a 3 MGD plant. It wouldn't be able to match the same capacity mm -hmm. as, as a water plant two. So it's. We're a desal? Yeah, like desal at this stage, we were looking at, you know, 3 MGD is pretty much the. Yeah, we can tell them to 10. I mean, it's right. It, that's 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 a that's an option. Yeah, we talked about that. So we're in a 50, 50, 50 our stuff, 50 their stuff. I guess I'm just throwing it out because you're saying, hey, we're running into some cost issues, and so it's now time to say. I mean, if I was a, a voter, somebody who lives here, which I am, uh, I would be like, why, why are we have three water plants for fifteen thousand people, or however, I don't know, thirty thousand people? Mm -hmm. I correct on that. Seems like a lot. It's just my right. And, and as far as the seawater train being in Port Isabel I mean, versus the north end of the island, I mean, that's where we can use, for example, the ground storage tanks, the high service pumps for both the seawater and the improvements, the surface water improvements at Water Plant One, trying to combine the infrastructure to, to really have you know one plant for as much as we can. Is water treatment plant one on that? Water plant one? No. Well, water plant one is here in Port Isabel. Right? No. So, and the desal plant that? would also be on the main. Correct. Uh, yes, yeah. it would be on the island. It'd be everything would be uh, here. Okay. Our goal right now is to get everything in Puerto So I, mean, okay. I don't know. That's something I'm just throwing out there. Yeah. 
Yeah. Well, I mean, yeah. I, mean, I suppose it's kind of. I don't want to say work away from our guys. Because no. you've got three things that are going to happen. You're running out of you can't surface water at the river, and you're maxed out at, at uh, water rights currently. So that that someday at the, at the current ten percent growth in thirty years, that's going to be awesome. Yeah. I, mean, I, I remember that there was a graph from Seven Seas. Is that the other company? And they basically had here was a line of like our cost. Here was like a line of their cost, yeah. and there was a they point where they yeah. met, right? Where like our cost keeps going up, and theirs obviously had, is, is kind of stable. They adjusted their graph due to inflation, right? And so, if that's the case for, for all companies, then it just at some point makes sense to not continue to invest in our own stuff and let somebody else kind of invest in big dog stuff, like with the diesel. Yeah. Um, so we don't have to buy water rates. We don't have to do all that. Because you're making all the, you're, you're throwing good money for bad money. If you were just to build one big desal plant and eliminate all the others, the problem is we're already invested with the other two plants. That you've got to keep up going. Yeah, yeah. and, and he's got to use car. Is you got to guarantee so much. So <laughs> the cost of water is going to go up. You have to guarantee sure. once in England. Yeah, yeah, you're going to use so much. At one point, so, would we be able to start selling our rights? So we just would, if we built a cell plant that provided enough water. So there's no water, there's no water. Well, I the rights to water. Those are the people who water. Never. Yeah. Water rights. Right. But when there is no water, it's soon going to happen one day out of Rio Grande. It's trickling yeah. lower and lower. He, he means, though, like, hey, get on. So, so your get, water rights. Yeah, we get fifty million. We go. We can sell twenty million of our rights for. Forget that. We keep our rights and sell our water. Yeah, yeah, you want to hold the rights and sell the water. Yeah, yeah, but 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 you know, one of our strengths is operations. The, you know, we do have strong operations. Um, kind of like she was mentioning the Bonaire mm -hmm. Island, where they're on a technical support. I mean, we kind of have a similar setup there at Water Plant too, mm -hmm. with maintaining an annual tech support contract with Falcorp. So I mean, say if as a seawater plant comes into play at Port Isabel. I mean, just the fact that we maintain operations with our staff would be a, a major savings versus you know having to contract it out. But I mean, those are the you know it's a matter of you know nothing's under yes yes we're at a ninety percent design for water plant one, and you know the idea of of uh, shifting gears to see how this can get repurposed to the to a seawater process if we want to get that creative. Um, you know that those those can be things on the table to to look water at. Water plant two is maxed out in size. Um, well, the, the the next step would be a third clarifier if we're going to add more uh, microfiltration uh, treatment. And that one increases that. Yes. 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 Yeah. It's not just with me because uh, there's uh, plenty of room property Inside, that we right. purchased a few years ago. The property. So we yeah. sell the bill though. Yes. So it's probably cheaper to do and to do water plant one than it would be to add on the water. Plant two. Absolutely. Yeah. Because because water plant one you have the clarifiers already complete and then you could add your higher grade. Treatment. I mean, the, the, you know, the first proposal ID gave us was blending the raw and the seawater because um, because if you can blend it in prior treatment, it just makes the cost lower to operate. And so, I mean, if we want to look at a blended uh, scenario at water plant one in Port Isabel and have it all, you know, from this point forward as a, as a seawater plant, and we could be blending at reservoir one. Once our in the group before say that. Permitting wise, and depending on the smaller plant that within a couple of years. Uh, yeah, I would imagine there's a way to. I mean, I, I was, I was, th I'm thinking the core study. I mean, I'm just proactive. talking from the last presentation. What I had thought they said was that permitting be about a year or so, and then that, uh, depending on the size of the plant, that it could be done within a year. See, it was, that's what I thought they said. Yeah, they did, but quicker if we use the market. We don't need to do it quickly. That's the thing. Uh, We'd rather do it. One of the things that I've been looking at is that we probably have to have a workshop for this type of uh, information. And uh, once we gather all the information from a couple of companies or more, maybe two or three, uh, we'll bring it to the board and have like a spring workshop so we can uh, find the board on all the, all the, the key ways to get, get it done. Right. Like, like yeah, say if we're going to do, because uh, our options, we can do a traditional, uh, you know, design, hire an engineering firm, have them fully designed before you bid it out, get a contractor. Or we can also look at a construction manager at risk where a contractor comes in, but, you know, maybe at a 30% design and like 
an ID technology type group, and uh, you know we can maybe be a little more efficient in that fashion. I would lean on them to to try to stay in their business. They do learn people kind of tell them. If they they don't show up and do the hard work at the front end, that's not really that impressive. One of the companies will. Well, they'll put the numbers together and be like, hey, when we send it to you, this is why you should do it. And I, okay, great, let's do it. And again, the, the Coven Seas uh, company has provided information for us. How we need this company to do the same. Yeah, I would ask you guys to then tell us, hey, you know what, this one was more responsive than this one. These guys, gosh, they put this all together. They told us things we had, didn't even know. That's kind of what I'm looking for. They're both design, design operation, build. Yeah. I mean, they're, they're both pre, they, they want to run them. Well, absolutely, yeah. 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 Okay, well, obviously, we, I think we got to keep going with this. It doesn't make sense. You know, we have a dream of desalinization, but we also have a reality of making this happen so obviously I'm supposed we should keep doing it. Uh, we have the money for it, but I have to scale down on this slightly because we knew we were going to do these out to save the money you're saying they need that's that's not well say say the microfiltration as a five MGD pretreatment if we're gonna add the RO at the tail end if that makes sense. I mean that puts us at a two and a half MGD seawater plant just repurposing our infrastructure that's gonna get built at this point. now right no, we don't have any RO. I'm all in favor of higher quality, so that that's not. Yeah. Yeah. Micro filtration. Yeah. Yeah, we got micro filter, but I'd love to do, you know, make this high quality. Better tasting water. Uh, I might have missed something that uh, Charles presented, but I'll get into the wall and send over. Uh, I, 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 I walked out uh, for. Uh, oh, I was just talking about how the estimates right now were short, uh, oh. nine, nine and a half million dollars or $10 million in that range. And with the invitation from the state revolving fund, it's a chance for us to, to reply. But, but I guess the timing for the state revolving fund uh, that, you know, it'll take, we're, we're back at square one doing a financial application, taking a year to get the, the funds yeah, in the bank. You have ongoing expectations from the board that you explore all revenue measures whenever possible, don't wait for us. Yeah. Make sure you have money to do them. Right? Like, don't come to us and be like, well, you know, we. We missed that meeting, so uh, yeah, we couldn't apply for twenty three million bucks, but uh, we cut up rates again. Like, <laughs> tell me that. Yeah. Yeah. Bad day. <laughs> yeah. It's like so, uh, go get some uh, money, Charles. Come on. Uh, <laughs> be doing a lot of car washes outside raising funds. Otherwise, <laughs> we're going to send the funds from the state for the pipeline. Okay. Can we get to that too? Funds for the, the pipeline to get water to the island. Yes. Is that what you're talking about? Yeah. Oh, yeah. I mean, again, like like when we were looking at distribution, I mean, we need to either upsize this water line on the causeway or build a booster pump. So, I mean, if, if we got to replace that line, like, like you know, we got to find a way to get either a booster pump on South Roger Island or we upsize the line on the causeway. And if the, the, the causeway line is at a point of needing to be upgraded or restored anyway, I mean, we could look at getting the larger diameter pipe on that bridge that, that would eliminate the need for a booster pump station. And I'd like to mention too that we're having to look into the 24 inch line that's going under under the bay and cross. Over by the old bridge. Yes. We have to look into that too because look into it meaning finding uh, cost estimates and, and how to do a uh, a new pipe within the same pipe? Yeah we're we're talking about a thirty five thousand feet of pipe that would probably need a larger size than what's there today. We gotta keep an eye on both because the other one that's under under the, the bay is older. Actually, like let's see. Yeah, the causeway is the older one. You probably want to target that for replacement first. Yeah. So you gotta keep an eye on both. Yeah. Cheaper to just throw a new pipe on top of the bridge in some capacity or on the side of you know like context for what's but I think you'd have to do a tax back for that. Uh, yeah, it would be. I mean, because uh, it's 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 supported by cradles, right? So it would just have to get upgraded for the the new size if we're going to go to the larger I think diameter. All the woes, we well, the fact that we need to make it larger, a, a bigger pipe in the first place. I mean, that kind of. You do better just to run a whole new underwater pipe. <laughs> yeah, horizontal directional drilling they can get a lot farther now than what <clears throat> they could do back in the day. Okay, let's get focused again. We're all, all over right. The board, sorry, I guess, I guess those are all water uh, system let's, improvements. Let's 
get yeah. focused. All right, yeah, and, yeah. Next item, just a North American Development Bank. They did do an on-site visit at Long Island Village. It went pretty well. Um, so, so yeah, I think we're on track to um, the estimated closing date is in April, and we seem to be on the same page with. Uh, you know, they got to, they, they got a good understanding of how the water sewer is pretty much underneath the, their homes, and they need to get into the street because just it's endless repairs and outages. What happened the other day over there where they kept shutting the water on and off at Long Island? I think it was a six-inch main that was bust broken. But, I mean, they, they have, they're not necessarily all reported, but I think it's weekly where they're having yeah, the no, water outages. Often. Yeah. So, I just so told them to be prepared. It's coming. Yeah, well, well I, th I think the most effective question during our meeting there was, uh, you know, an ask of how many people keep water in buckets and on hand because they're so used to it. And every single person said yes. Wow. That's so yeah we're, we're that's the yeah world stuff right so so i think that was pretty effective to let that think understand you know the need on the sites so so and then of course with the core um they did their first set of data collection uh their uh they, they have a draft uh, technical study from their literature review that i included in the in the uh, board packet um so uh and then again just working with id we actually collected some additional data just to be able to use that to be a little proactive on the design. So that, that's, you know, sort of to wrap it up quick, I guess that's what we can say about the, we're still on schedule with the core study. Um, that, that should include budgetary numbers, uh, which we should have in August of 2022, or 2023, sorry. So that'll help us for making some budget decisions for the next fiscal year you know, for the seawater site. Okay. And then last but not least, Isablanca uh, sewer plant. We had some heavy rain out there and uh, pretty much flooded the site and uh, just chasing it down um it looks like a 30 inch outfall reduces down to a 15 inch pipe going from our plant out to the bay and uh you know it's it's just too small and so i, I guess we're trying to address that outfall pipe to accommodate both the site drainage and uh just the i draw all that rain the, yeah the 10 days of <laughs> yes right so oh yeah so here's some photos so so pretty much that that man like i'm with well, this is standing right on top of the of the digesters the basins and from that plastic manhole right there um, that's coming off of our plant it's a 30 inch pipe and then from that manhole it becomes a 15 inch to the to the concrete head wall on the bay and so uh, I don't know is there another picture on the on the exhibit yes so, so that's basically where we're coming out of the plant as a 30 inch and we're going into the bay at a 15 inch and in low flow it's kind of a toilet bowl sort of vortex effect but uh but uh in higher flows let's see is if there's another picture on there that's that's uh when it's raining uh how, how it's just coming off the top of the of the concrete structures that are outfall when we do our sampling so you know we, we got to address the, the the pipeline to get it sized correctly and just the inflow and infiltration as a whole and so so that's just basically you know letting you know that's out there in addition to uh, grid removal. I mean, the, we, we talked to Coast Guard because they're the property owner adjacent to the south. And they seem to, the, the area to the south of us, it's, there's a dike on the perimeter. That's where they perceive dredge material. And if we look at any kind of easements or site work, probably be working in that direction. So we probably want to be talking to the Coast Guard to try to get a permanent solution out here. Because um, the I think the drainage swell on the north end uh, at the outfall has kind of been filled in with the uh, some of the public work stuff that the city's been doing out there. And it's just, you know, it's starting to become a problem with finding their own site. Well, that's kind of unacceptable. Yeah, that's that's basically uh, what it was that's like. Unacceptable. And I mean, it was, yeah, with the water even creeping into our blower room, so that's getting dangerous. So we're trying to address the, the drainage here at this site. Yeah. So, yeah. Just, I guess that's an emerging project. Uh, but yeah, I suppose that concludes the the engineer's report. Okay. Let's move on to item twelve. All right. Now, item twelve. That's the the contractor working out there uh, with with uh, with Bechtel did request your proposal for. Uh, but they, what they were wanting to do is uh, get a four inch meter off our 24 inch line here on highway 48 and then run their the pipeline to provide temporary water supply you know anywhere from 150,000 gallons per day to 250,000 gallons per day for the duration of construction i mean the, the construction could, could, could go on for years they didn't really define how long they needed. yes correct 
And so basically uh, what we have here for proposal, I kind of wanted to get permission before uh, submitting it to the contractor, was just a, basically a standard uh, tapping charge for the four inch meter. We'd be looking at uh, you know, $9,696 due um, to request the four inch tap. And then uh, and part of that is the uh, deposit uh, $1,580 and the rest are the turn on fees, inspection, the water the four inch tap uh, for us to complete the, the install. And then what goes along with that is uh, an 18, 18 week lead time to receive the meter and then pretty much the outside district rate schedule we're looking at doubling the uh, minimum charge for the first fifty thousand uh, for a thousand dollars and then sort of backing out um, just a cost when they're above fifty thousand gallons at thirteen dollars per thousand gallon would be just a flat rate regardless of how much they use so that, that's pretty much what's written in the proposal if that's good with the board we can <clears throat> send that to the contractor and see if you can get it through the back that's that's basically uh, what's on the table for consideration at this time. This is an action item. We uh, express that as last time. Basically, I was like, I don't know if you can see the last time. I'm out. Motion for approval by Dr. Alon, Dr. Magnus Butter. All those in favor? Aye. There are any opposed? None. Motion carries. Thank you. That's a big, big project. Yes. And it's going to be that. Yeah, yeah, I believe it's what 920 acres somewhere in there. But yeah, uh, takes item 13 consider discuss for possible approval of intent to apply for funding the Texas Water Development Board through the Drinking Water State Revolving Fund for Water Treatment Plant Number One and EST improvements. All right, so this is the letter that I was referencing during the, the engineer support. Yes. And so, uh, you know, I don't think we need the full 23,971,750. But uh, I think uh, if maybe we recommend an amount not to exceed 10 million would be fair in terms of uh, our deadline to, to uh, apply is uh, January 2nd, uh, 2023. Yeah, it, it should, like with our current estimates, it, it should. But I, I we giving can, yourself enough leeway. <laughs> I bet, yeah, the, like, like they, they, the, the true estimate was 9.5 million. And then I've added some contingency uh, for the last two, the, Talent projects that got it up to nine point seven million and bump it up to ten million just because there's still on hands. Yeah, that would be that's just... how much leeway you gave yourself. Why don't we ask for twelve? Well, that that's it. Yeah, I mean, if we just want to increase our because right now, you know, we got to see how this tank is going to open when we receive bids after the deadline of this invitation, like in, in January seventeenth. So you can I mean, apply for more but don't have to use it. Right. So, 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 yeah. You're better but, off to apply for a larger amount. Yeah, I'd be in favor of it. Okay, so we'll just keep it higher. And your reason, yeah. 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 So you can that's tell that's me. What we'll be talking about like raising yeah. it up higher. If you can tell me, yeah, don't do it for this reason. Great. But. Yeah, I think I think it, it's always we can always go down, but we can't go up. So, I think if we go if at this point do the fifty million request and then have the. They might, they might go down. Like, yeah, they I mean, I mean, it all. between now and the end, when we submit the financial application, um, you know, maybe we'll have more fine numbers. I'm hoping we'll already have the palm membranes under contract, tank six under contract, and then it'll be less unknowns at that stage. Well, our motion to approve fifteen million requests. Second. Motion made by Dr. Lawan, second by Mr. Uh, Donahue. Are all those in favor? They are. Any opposed? None. Motion carries. Thank you. That was a good call. Uh, that takes us to item 14, consider and review expenditures from November 15th, 2022 to November 30th, 2022. So everyone had a chance to acknowledge, acknowledge them, acknowledged by Mr. Botter, acknowledged by Dr. Lalonde, acknowledged by Mr. Friedman and Mr. Donahue. That takes us to item 15, adjourn this meeting at 6.47 p.m.